Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here, back with another video on markets and market failure. In this video, we focus on really important elasticity, the price elasticity of supply. So, PES, price elasticity of supply, measures the responsiveness of the supply of a good or service to a change in its price. It's a really important idea. Can suppliers adjust quantity produced in response to changing price signals in the market? Now, the formula is percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price. So, for example, 25% rise in price might lead to a 40% expansion of production. Plus 40 over plus 25 gives plus 1.6. Loads of examples of elasticity, the importance of Elasticity of supply of things like vaccines or other healthcare products, the limited capacity of the NHS providing meeting patient needs, obviously something like 8 million people on waiting lists in the UK. The NHS faces significant supply constraints, elasticity of supply for treatments and uh, elective meet and uh, appointments is very limited. A uh, major topical issue, the supply of new housing typically tends to be inelastic. The supply of sources of renewable energy, such as wind and solar. And crucially, within the development context, the elasticity of supply of commodities within a growing period. Now, let's look at price elastic supply. So suppose the price of wheat goes up from $100 per tonne to $120. That's a 20% rise in the price of wheat. And as a result, the quantity supplied increases from 500 to 700 tonnes. That's a 40% increase in supply. So putting those numbers into the formula, elasticity equals plus 40 over plus 20 equals plus 2. And because it's greater than 1, <coughs> pardon me, 2 in this case, that suggests the price elastic supply. Whereas, let's take the price of a gemstone increasing from $5,000 to $7,500. That is a, what is it, a 50% change in price. Do the math, Riley. That might only lead to a 20% increase in supply. So plus 20 over plus 50 gives plus 0.4, which is less than 1, indicating a price in elastic supply. Here are some of the key factors affecting price elasticity of supply. The most important probably is spare capacity. So if businesses have plenty of excess capacity, unused machinery, spare labour, then a business can increase output without a rise in cost. Supply will tend to be price elastic if demand changes. Stocks of finished products, components and perishability. So if stocks are high, a firm can quite easily meet demand. They can re reduce stocks, offload them and put them onto the market. Supply will tend to be fairly elastic. Perishable goods, on the other hand, can be quite hard and expensive to store particularly if you have to keep them refrigerated, that typically makes stocks less elastic. The ease and cost of factor substitution and mobility. So if you have mobile factors of production, if capital and labour are occupationally mobile, typically the elasticity of supply is higher because you can bring new resources into play quickly. You can reallocate workers to new tasks. Whereas if you have immobility of factors of production, then that makes supply less elastic. And crucially, supply tends to be more price elastic the longer is the time period that we give firms to adjust to production levels. So I think some examples here. What's the elasticity of supply of producing an extra 10,000 cans of baked beans a day? In theory, it should be fairly easy, but it does depend on the amount of spare capacity in baked bean manufacturing uh, factories. Building 2,000 new homes to meet rising demand. Well, we think here that supply will be inelastic. The time frame involved in getting planning permission, acquiring land. There could be shortages of skilled labour. <clears throat> Pardon me, there, should be, there could be shortages of key materials. What about ordering a Domino's pizza at peak times? Well, at peak times, demand is high and local Domino's franchises may come up against supply constraints, which would make it fairly inelastic, and hence the delays in delivery. Whereas at off-peak times, oftentimes you can get your pizza pretty quickly. And if you think about growing food, let's take a growing more avocado, surging, uh, surging global demand. Again, farming technologies are changing, in theory, making supply more elastic, 
are growing throughout the entire year. But uh, in practice, there are production delays between planting, growing, harvesting, processing and getting products to market. What about seats at the Premier League stadium? Well, typically, of course, in the if for one given season, the amount of seats are fixed. These are the capacities of Premier League grounds for the 2023-24 season. Kenilworth Road has the smallest capacity, Old Trafford the biggest. A couple of grounds there in particular, if you're a Chelsea fan, Stamford Bridge, 40,000 capacity, but of course most of the seats face the pitch, which is a slight design vault. So if we're drawing uh, elasticity, that will be an elastic supply curve, big increase in demand for D1 to D2. It uh, brings about a, a fairly elastic response, and you can, you can increase supply from Q1 to Q2 with only a small rise in price. Supply will tend to be price elastic when suppliers have plenty of spare capacity, when there are high stock levels, when there's a short time frame to getting products to market, and when factors of production are mobile, can easily be moved from one task to another. So when supply is elastic, producers can respond quickly to a rise in demand without an increase in costs and prices. Think about that at the macroeconomic level, for example. Uh, when you're coming out of recession, aggregate supply tends to be fairly elastic. Inflationary pressures are weak, whereas inflation tends to increase when aggregate supply becomes inelastic. Here's a price inelastic supply curve. Big increase in demand from D1 to D2, but only a limited supply response and price goes up from P1 to P2. And supply tends to be priced inelastic when the supply has limited spare capacity, Stock levels are low or can be increased only with a, a time lag. There could be a lengthy time delay between starting and finishing a production process and when factors of production, land and labour and capital are immobile and cannot easily be switched between tasks. So there's a perfectly elastic supply curve and there is a perfectly inelastic supply curve. When you have a perfectly inelastic supply curve, quantity is fixed. Supply does not respond to a change in market price. Here's a little example. Let's think about electric char uh, charging points. So at the start of 2023, there were just under 40,000 electric charging devices. Now, clearly, that's not enough. Um, <laughs> a lot of people who are buying electric cars have range anxiety. If they can't charge their car up at home, they have fears over the distance their electric vehicle can travel between charges. And... Uh, the evidence suggests we, we're probably going to need upwards of 2 million public charge points, maybe 3 million uh, by the end of, uh, by the sort of the next decade. So give me two factors that affect the price elasticity of supply of e-vehicle charging points. Well, one is the availability of land and the need for planning permission. So there are often big delays between plans being submitted and installation of charging points and land in urban areas is often quite scarce. And secondly, spare capacity amongst those infrastructure manufacturers, so businesses who are installing, building, charging points. They might be short of skilled labour, key components, and therefore there might be delays in connecting charging points to grids. Now there's the demand for charging points going up. If the supply is inelastic, the unit price tends to rise. But if we can cause the supply of charging points to shift and become more elastic, so for example, government subsidies, it comes of scale in manufacturing of charging points, maybe some process innovation, including wireless charging, uh, maybe uh, regulations. New res residential homes with on-site parking must have its own charge point. Then in theory, we can shift that supply curve out and it can become more elastic over time. So as demand shifts out to D3, then we can get to that equilibrium with a, a unit price for charging perhaps lower than at the moment. So in theory, if we can scale up the availability of charging points, that should bring prices down and encourage more people to buy electric cars. There we go. This was a revision video on elasticity of supply. Thanks for joining in. If you found it useful, please press the like button, subscribe to our channel, and uh, we'll see you again sometime soon.